Welcome to A Fresh Start with Dr. Bobby Mullins, Executive Director of Back to the Basics Ministries. At some time, we all need a fresh start. And each week on A Fresh Start TV program, you'll hear a relevant message straight from the Bible, providing examples and principles to show us how to start over again. Join us now for this edition of A Fresh Start as Dr. Mullins proclaims from the Word of God how to live the abundant life Jesus desires for all of us to experience. The simplicity of Christ the complexity of life with simple things our Lord confounds the wise the completion of the cross salvation for the lost the love of God so simple so profound so simple, so profound, the love of Jesus. So profound that even angels can't perceive. So simple that a child can grasp the glory. The love of God, so simple, so profound. Such perplexity today in a fallen human race could unravel with acceptance of God's grace Simply bow your knees to pray Confess the Lord today Profoundly He will turn your life around So simple, so profound The love of Jesus so profound that even angels can't perceive So simple that a child can grasp the glory The love of God so simple, so profound So simple, so profound the love of Jesus So profound that even angels can perceive So simple that a child can grasp the glory The love of God so simple, so profound Love of God, so simple, so profound. The Father has a plan, though it's hard to see it now. You feel you're walking all alone, but He is there, no doubt. When the storm around you rages And you're tossed to and fro When you're faced with life's decisions Not sure which way to go Stand still And let God move Standing still Is hard to do When 
the tide is swiftly rising and you wonder where he's been friend there never was a moment that his arms weren't reaching out you can rest assured and be secure god is moving right now stand still and let god move standing still is hard to do when you feel you have reached the end he'll make a way for you stand still and let god move. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. When you feel you have reached the end, he'll make a way for you. Stand still and let God move. The answer will come, but all Here's Dr. Bobby Mullins. I want to welcome you to this broadcast of A Fresh Start. We appreciate those of you who are faithful viewers on a weekly basis, but we find out every time we air the broadcast, somebody new watches the program. And I'm thankful when I hear from someone who has just seen the program for the first time. We have information there on the screen how you can email me, but it's uh, dr. Bobby Mullins at AOL.com. That's simple as far as the emailing goes. And I do appreciate uh, it when you send us a message of how a message has touched you. But also, if you're a first time viewer, I wrote a book a few years ago called Channel of Blessing How to Identify and Apply Your Spiritual Gift. I tell you, if you read the book, I approach it from the seven main motivational spiritual gifts given in the Bible, you have one of those as your main motivational spiritual gift. And I have it in hard copy, but I offer on the television program to send it for free by email an e-copy of the book. The format of it is exactly the way it is in the hard copy. So if you will email me at, again, Dr. Bobby Mullins, Dr. B-O-B-B-Y-M-U-L-L-I-N-S at AOL.com. All you need to say is, would you send me a free copy of your book on spiritual gifts titled Channel of Blessing? Now, I promise you, I'm not going to put you on some type of mailing list or whatever. I do, about every other month, send out a what I call a Back to the Basics Ministries update. If you would be interested in receiving that, then again, email me at drbobbymullins at aol.com and say, I'd like to be on your newsletter list. And I just share things that are going on with our ministry and upcoming on the Fresh Start TV program. And we'd love to have you on our mailing list. Now tonight, I'm going to deal with the concept in the Bible that I, I believe every great man and woman of God in the Bible learned, but it's something that also all of us as Christians need to practice in our own lives. I've titled this, Be Still. We're, we're in a society today that's so fast-paced, they think you've got to be doing this, doing that. You've always got to have some plan of action. Sometimes the best plan of action you can have is to be still, to be silent to ponder, to meditate upon the Word of God, to ask God to speak to your heart, to really be able to think through things. I get my messages as a pastor and then, uh, you know, even for this program, for the most, I mean, they're all Bible-based. What I share with you tonight, everything, every point is there's a scripture that backs it up. 
But I do a lot of expository preaching where I pastor and I preach through books of the Bible and we go verse by verse. But here lately, the last few months, I believe that God has given me some very relevant messages, not so much from preaching through a book of the Bible, but simply sitting in my quiet time every day that I have, devotional time, and thinking. <laughs> I have a guy, he's a great preacher, and he was speaking to our preaching class years ago at the seminary I attended, and one day they asked him, where do you get your sermons? And he kind of looked baffled and said, you know, where do you come up with your outlines and, and all? And he paused a moment and he said, fellas, you would be amazed at what you can come up with just by thinking. And so really, when I preach a message, I'll be honest, I, my seminary said you need to read X amount of commentaries and we had a 12 step process we went through to prepare a sermon. I basically have one now. I sit down and ask God to speak to my heart. Again, if I'm preaching through a book of the Bible, I'll read through the commentaries. I'll read things that will help me with that particular book. But when I'm just sitting there, I'm asking to hear from God, and he'll give me a simple message. That's where Be Still came from. I want to read from the 20th chapter today of Second Chronicles for the year 2015 as a theme for my church, we've said 2 Chronicles 2015 and 2015. This is the verse for our church this year, and it's the verse, I guess, for the TV program too. But the Israelites were about to face a great army. On paper, it did not look like the Israelites would be able to have victory. But they had experienced victory before, when they were greatly outnumbered because God was with them. And as the old saying goes, God and me are a majority. And so they're at that point again. They're going to face the Ammonites and whomever they've gotten to fight with them. And so King Jehoshaphat, they've been praying. And the Bible says, Hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jew Jerusalem, and thou, King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. And tomorrow you'll go down against them. And then verse 17 says, You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem, Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, and the Lord will be with you. Oh, my friends, there are times in life that the Lord tells us, I'm going to take care of this for you. Now, there are things we need to do in our lives. We need to live in a right relationship with the Lord. But so often, the battle is not ours, but God's. And if we'll just back off and be still, God will take care of it. By the way, First of all, I want you to see today that you will never show how much faith you have until you can be still and be silent. We have associated godliness with activity. And we think the more active you are, the more busy you are, that you're really being godly. And many people tend to spend a lot of time doing things for God, but not spending time with the Lord. I think that's a key in the Christian life. We tend to spend time for God, but not time with God. And that makes all the difference in the world. You can do things for God, but if you haven't spent time with God, those things you're doing for God don't necessarily have the power of the Holy Spirit upon them, and you're doing it in the strength of the flesh. But you see, God is more concerned with our being, what we truly are spiritually, than our doing. And some of us are human doings, but not really being the human beings that we ought to be for the Lord. So do you ever take time just to be still, before God, to listen to God, 
to allow God to work on your behalf. You will never know how much faith you have until you show how you can be still and be silent. Number two, to do nothing and say nothing seems to be one of the hardest things for Christians. This will be a revolutionary concept for some who are always compelled to give you your opinion. You know, God doesn't necessarily want to hear your opinion. He's a good God, slow to wrath, slow to anger, quick to mercy and forgive. But the opinion that we need to get the most is God's. If you please God, it does not matter whom you displease. But if you displease God, it does not matter whom you please. And so for some, springing into action makes them feel better about themselves in that they have at least made an effort to do something. But sometimes they're doing something compounds the problem. You get out there. I found in my life that when I do something instead of sit before God and get his mind on decisions before me, and I get out there and I start doing something, I get ahead of God, and eventually it knocks me several steps back than where I was, and I have to get caught back up again. And one reason today that some people can't hear God is because they're too busy doing something or saying something, and they're not necessarily up to date on how God's unchanging word can more effectively impact an ever-changing world. I tell you folks, that's a balance we really need to reach today. We need to change and do things differently. But the word of God never changes. And we've got to make sure as in some ways, we're becoming so much like the world to try to draw people into the church that we're changing some of the basic standards of God's Word that have always been there. So, be still before God. There are times that God will fight the battle himself. If he doesn't fight it, boy, he makes the means for you. He shows you the way and he clears the way for you to do it. But you'll never know how much faith you have until you can be still and be silent before the Lord. To do nothing and say nothing seems to be one of the hardest things for Christians. Now here's a revolutionary idea too. When you're about to complain about something, criticize someone, or murmur in some way, praise God instead. I want to say that again. When you're about to complain about something, when you're about to criticize someone, you're about to murmur in some way, praise God instead. Some of you will be praising God more in one day than you've praised him before in a long time, maybe in all your life. But you see, some people think so little of themselves that to feel better about themselves, they'll belittle others. Don't, don't get in that kind of a rut. I tell you, one time in my life, you know how men try to one-up each other on things? I tell you, I could put people down pretty good. And I always seem to have a way if someone got a cut in on me, boy, I could cut back even harder. But you know, through the years, I read through the Bible every year, I get into the Word to get the Word into me, and as I've done that, it's made me a, a less harsh person. I'm not the kind of person who just wants to fight it out or, you know, with somebody verbally, you know. There are times I've learned just to walk away and I'm more at peace doing that, even when they're out there belittling me. If somebody has to belittle others, it's usually because they think so little of themselves. You know, it's amazing what praising can do for one personally. It will turn a negative nature into a positive one. In a program that I recently shared on words, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in my sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The Bible says in Proverbs, your words can snare you. 
So your words are either snaring you and you become a negative person and complaining person and murmuring person, or you're the kind of person who will praise God. It's amazing what praising can do. In this passage in, that I read from 2 Chronicles chapter 20, they had told them, you be still, be silent. But there came a time as they went out to battle they let God do the work, but it says that they praised the Lord for what he was going to do, kind of their way of praying and thanking God. And when they began doing that, that's when God worked on their behalf and led them to a great victory. Some people may think, well, if I complain about it in my church, it'll get better. If I criticize this person, he'll get better. And, and that's not how you do it. Begin praising God. Again, when you are about to complain about something, criticize someone, or murmur in some way, praise God instead. Then number four, if you feel someone is wrong and you feel like letting them know it or telling others about it, D-O-N apostrophe T, don't. Ask God to deal with them if they are wrong and ask God to deal accordingly with you if you are wrong about it. Now, again, that's revolutionary. I've said today, just for some people to be still and not do something, to be silent, that's revolutionary for some people. To do nothing seems to be hard to do. But then I talked about, instead of criticizing someone, praise God instead. You'll be praising God more than you ever have in your life. And let me tell you, it'll make a difference for you, and God will see it, and he'll honor you for it. But we sometimes, we just think we've got to tell somebody off. We've got to tell somebody what we think. But if you're a Christian and you want to do that, don't. First, ask God to deal with that person if they're wrong. But then ask God to deal accordingly with you if you're wrong. Mm. <laughs> we don't like to do that, do we? We want them to be wrong, God, to deal with what's wrong in them. But if it comes back and God says, well, no, you're the one who's at fault. You're the one who needs to be dealt with. You've got to be willing to do that. You know, too often what someone criticizes about somebody else, they are often more guilty of that same thing. So I would say to you today, be careful, careful what you criticize about someone and what you tell others about. You know, I have talked about when a fellow Christian betrays you and they talk about you behind your back. Let me tell you, if someone will talk about somebody else behind their back to you, uh, you're, they'll do the same to you. You're better off not to listen to it at all. Now, I have no statistical research for this, but I say that I, I believe that 95% of the situations in churches that cause problems would che cease if church members would follow this practice. Instead of telling somebody off how wrong they are, don't. Ask God to deal with them, then ask God to deal with you accordingly if you're the one who's wrong. Wow. Here's one thing I believe we need in our churches more than anything else today, and it's peace. People just get upset over anything and everything. I heard about a man here recently got upset because the, the editor of the church newsletter didn't say something exactly the way he wanted it. And, I'm, man, he just got extremely upset. Put that other minister down who was new at that church, who had expertise in that area and explain logically to the man it was a matter of the space they had and the wording and things. He, the guy worded it better than the other man did, but I mean, people just get upset over that. Man, lighten up a little bit. Again, ask God to deal with them. If they're wrong, God will deal with them. But if you're the one at fault, ask God to deal with you. You know, God said that he would take care of those who wrong you and others. And if it's not a serious offense, 
that must be dealt with publicly, then don't do it. Because I can tell you this, when God deals with someone, it's usually harder than if you or I had dealt with them. God knows exactly what is needed with someone who's wronged you. So be still. You'll never know how much faith you have until you can be still and be silent. To do nothing and say nothing is one of the hardest things for some Christians that you will ever do. But then I want to ask you this week, I want to ask you to follow through with this. When you're about to complain about something, criticize someone or murmur in some way, praise God instead. I believe it'll change your life. Look back and see how praising God instead will make you a better person. And then if you feel someone's wrong and you feel like you want to let them have it or let others know about it, don't. Ask God to deal with them if they're wrong. And then ask God to deal with you accordingly if you are the one who is in the wrong. Folks, there are times in life that yes, we ought to have a great energetic, uh, high energy, praising God, shouting, clapping, worship service. But there are times when we just need to be still before God. We need to think through things. And I believe as we do that and we find that right balance, it'll help us to have a calmer spirit and a better spirit. And we'll be able to say, thanks be to you, O God, who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In addition to my work with Back to the Basics Ministries and a Fresh Start TV program, I'm also the pastor of Fellowship Baptist Church in Hernando, Mississippi, which is about 20 miles south of Memphis. We'd love to have you come visit with us for our worship service at 1030 on Sunday or at 530 on Sunday evening. We're just about two miles south of exit 284 that you take coming out of Memphis. Go to Highway 51 turn left and we're about two miles down on the right in a two-story octagon shaped building. About a half mile before you get to Fellowship Baptist Church you'll pass under Interstate 69. We'd love to have you visit if you live in Memphis, Hernando, North Mississippi or if you're just simply visiting in the Memphis area come and visit us at Fellowship Baptist Church in Hernando, Mississippi. For more information and to donate to our ministry, please visit us online at www.drbobbymullins.com. Thank you for joining us today. Be sure to tune in next time for another inspirational word on a Fresh Start TV program.